guys, I'm back with the fourth installment of Did It Survive, where I'm taking the first 36 enemies from the original 1986 Legend of Zelda and start to do a general breakdown on them to see where they've ended up over the past 38 years. So far we've went over Armos, Lynels, Rope, Zora, Goria, Keys, Dig Dogger, Stone Statues, Pea Hats, Patra, Wizrobes, Goma, Bubbles, Pal's Voice, Octorox, Guinea, and Leavers, making that the first 17 enemies from the original game. If you're interested in seeing those, I'll link the playlist right here. Now let's jump into today's enemies. The first enemy we're going to go over is fairly well known. This is Muldorm. In the original, they were found in dungeons in rooms full of sand. They're pretty docile and won't attack right away. They have five orbs that are linked together, forming their body. As you hit the orbs, they slowly disappear, eventually killing the Muldorm. With the worm's overall health being 10, two for each orb, their damage is only half a heart, so they're really not unmanageable by any means. They appear in level 2 and 7 in the first quest, and in the second quest, they're in level 1 and 8. You might be thinking, I have no idea who Moldorm is. Let me show you some other versions of this guy. This is Moldorm in The Legend of Zelda, everyone's absolute favorite boss from A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures, The Minish Cap, Twilight Princess, Phantom Hourglass, Skyward Sword, A Link Between Worlds, and Triforce Heroes. As you probably noticed, some of these titles have smaller Moldorms that hang out in the dungeons that bounce around wall to wall. Moldorms usually act as a mini boss, a main boss in the dungeon, or an enemy in some sort of labyrinth, aside from Twilight Princess where they free roam the whole desert region and dungeon. If you played A Link to the Past, you definitely remember fighting this guy on a floating floor and being knocked down countless times to restart the battle again and again. Thankfully, this boss was nerfed some in A Link Between Worlds, making it so the damage made to the health wouldn't regenerate. I do think it's one of the more memorable bosses in the whole franchise, just for its difficulty in A Link to the Past. I don't know about you guys, but I personally spent way too long being thrown over the edge of both of these battles. However, with the choice of games it does appear in, I feel like the spacing of the games has made it still kind of relevant for the most part. It might not be in the most recent games, but I'm sure it still lives somewhere in your memory. This next guy will probably seem pretty familiar to you, especially if you played Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask. This is Dodongo. These dinosaur lookalikes are usually found as bosses or mini bosses in the dungeons, ranging from a single enemy to a trio. They are found free roaming around the empty room. These guys aren't extremely hard to deal with, with only 8 hearts and a damage of 1. The wizard in this level tells you that Dodongo doesn't like smoke, implying bombs are the way to go. So if you get right in front of the enemy, you can feed it 2 bombs and kill this guy with no hits. Dodongos are found in level 2, 5, and 7 in the first quest, and again in level 1, 3, 4, and 8 in the second quest. These guys have appeared in The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, Four Swords, and Twilight Princess. You might be thinking Oracle of Ages shouldn't be included, but even though Dodongos don't actually appear in the game as an enemy, there's a character named Dimmery that actually is pretty handy in the game. In Ocarina of Time, they actually have another type of enemy named Baby Dodongo. They're easily removed by a bomb or bomb chew. All of the Dodongos are defeated by sucking in bombs except the guys from Twilight Princess. They just spit fire out to harm you, making you slash their tails. I also want to add in Dodongo Rongo from Phantom Hourglass. Even though it's technically not Dodongo, I like to think these guys are like their cousins. They enjoy bomb chews as well as bombs in this game. Most people would probably remember Dodongos from Ocarina of Time since it did have Dodongos Cavern as a dungeon with its creepy music or the boss itself being Dodongo. I know I do. That creepy intro to the boss battle is quite unforgettable at least for this enemy. I don't know if Dodongos would be considered relevant due to the lack of games that they appear in, but they're memorable from the games that they are in whether it be a companion, a dungeon, or an annoying boss. Next up we have some cute mummified undead enemies. They're called Gibdo. Gibdo are found roaming around dungeons, shuffling around blocks in the room, not really bothered by Link. If you get closer, they'll come to you, but won't immediately start moving to you upon entering the room. They have eight hearts, but deal two hearts of damage if they make contact with you, making them slightly more risky to deal with, especially if you have multiple enemies in the room. They're easily taken down with a couple of hits from the magical sword, as long as you can dodge their contact hits. They are found in level five and level eight in the first quest. In the second quest, they're in level two, four, and seven. Throughout the series, they're found in The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures, The Minish Cap, Twilight Princess, A Link Between Worlds, Triforce Heroes, Tears of the Kingdom, and Cadence of Hyrule. In Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, they're basically the same as Redeads, other than the cosmetic aspects. 
But in Twilight Princess, they're sword-wielding dummies that screech whenever you get close. With this observation, they have been categorized with re-deads for a while, but they're in fact Gibdo. Tears of the Kingdom brought these guys back for the desert area, just like most of the other games, and they decided to add a large bug-type boss as Queen Gibdo. I also wanted to add in here that in A Link to the Past, they're extremely resilient to hits, seeing that they're already dead. It takes 12 hits to defeat them with the sword, but they're extremely flammable, so flame rods work very well. I think that the amount of games that the Gibdo appear in and the gears that the games flow through make them pretty relevant still, and I really like the fact that they decided to add them to the newest game to continue their legacy. These next guys get confused a lot with Choo Choo's or their larger counterpart, Souls. These are called gels. Gels are exactly how you would expect them to be. They're kind of like a jello-like substance. They are commonly found in dungeons in The Legend of Zelda, changing colors with the color of the level that they appear in. They can be defeated with a simple boomerang throw, so they don't really require a whole bunch of effort to take care of. They only take half a heart when contact is made and they only have one heart for health. They are found alone wandering in the rooms of the level or if you defeat a Zold, two gels appear. They are found in all the levels of the game in both quests. They're also found in The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, Four Swords, Phantom Hourglass, and Cadence of Hyrule. Along with these games, they were meant to be in the Menace Cap along with the Zoles, but they didn't make the final cut of the game. I think personally these guys are pretty cool, but I favor the enemies with the extra enemies after their death. I don't think they have thrived in any recent titles and might have slowly been changed into choo-choos over the course of the years. I do appreciate them in the titles that they appear in and I think they're super cute especially in the 2D games. We've shortly brushed over these next guys when we expanded on Keys. These are their larger counterparts, Vires. These blue devils bounce around rooms and dungeons. They have four hearts and only deal half a heart in damage with contact hits. If you land a hit on a vire with a standard weapon, it splits into two red keys. But if you use an arrow, a magic sword, or anything that does at least 4 damage, it will completely destroy the vire instead of splitting it up. They appear in levels 4, 6, and 9 in the first quest, and levels 5, 6, and 9 in the second quest. They also become less popular throughout the years, only appearing in The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, and Cadence of Hyrule. Notably, in Oracle of Seasons and Ages, they appear as mini-bosses. Even though they're bosses, after you have enough hits, they still split into two keys you have to battle. In Cadence of Hyrule, Vire split into four keys instead of two, and appear in the DLC cutscene attacking a Deku scrub. I don't have much experience with these demons other than the original guys in The Legend of Zelda, but I always thought they were cute bouncing around. Not so cute if you didn't kill both keys and you have to leave the room and they regenerate but still cute. I don't really think these guys have stuck around too much, only appearing in 5 out of the 20 games. This last enemy has been recently revived in the new installment in the Zelda franchise. These are called Like Likes. They are found sliding around dungeons but will come searching for you when you enter the room. They're actually quite a handful if you don't take care of them towards the start of the room. They swallow you up taking half a heart and have the chance of taking your magical shield before they release you. They also take quite a few hits to take down with 9 hearts and around 4 hits to take down until the magical sword is obtained. They are in level 4, 6, and 9 in the first quest and in the second quest they are in 5, 6, and 9. They are in a plethora of games including The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past Game Boy Advanced Edition only, Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, The Minish Cap, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks, A Link Between Worlds, Triforce Heroes, Tears of the Kingdom, and Cadence of Hyrule. These guys are quite memorable from any game that they're in. They're one of the more annoying enemies in the series. They have an incredibly long reach and will swallow you up in no time, still taking items in most cases rupees or shields. They are also pretty good at disguising themselves as pots, rupees, or treasure chests so you get at least one surprise while you're playing the game. In Tears of the Kingdom, they now also have elemental powers. They shoot their respective elements like rock, electricity, and fireballs at you. They now also harbor shields in a chest. I like to think this is a nod to the original stealing gears in the past games. And if you fuse their orbs to a shield, it gets crazy fun. I think these guys have stuck around pretty well and I was stoked to see their return in the newest game. I think they've been pretty alive in the franchise the last 38 years and I hope to see their continued return in the future. This is all the enemies for today. That is now 23 out of the original 36. I hope you've enjoyed today's editions. We're over halfway through with the series now. Let me know your favorite enemy we've gone over so far in the comments below. I'll leave the first video of the series linked here so you can watch it from the starting point if you're interested. If you enjoy the installments up to this point, don't forget to share this with a fellow old school Zelda fan. Also, like and subscribe so you don't miss out on a new video. With that, be safe. Go on an adventure and I'll see you guys next time.